This is the Sales Bible Podcast, episode 438, The Origin of the Tao Te Ching of Sales and Sales Babble. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non-sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, Sales Babblers. This is Pat Helmers. Today, we're going to talk about the Tao Te Ching of Sales. If you're new to the podcast, each week we take a concept in selling and look at it from a Taoist point of view with a poem, a vignette, and then a quote with advice on how you can apply this wisdom to your business. Sounds like crazy talk, right? Well, today I'd like to take a time out and share the origins of Sales Babble and what I'm trying to do here on the podcast and why I'm solely focused on a Taoist approach to selling, and how the heck we all ended up in this place. I've been podcasting about sales for quite some time, interviewing sales experts, mostly in the B2B space, because I come from tech sales, and I love that topic, and I really enjoy the process and the challenges of enterprise sales. Had a lot of great times with the podcast, but after seven years, I felt like I was getting stale. So I decided to change things up by going backwards. What do you mean by that, Pat? Let's rewind 10 years. Back then, I started a blog called The Tao Te Ching of Sales. It was based on the ideas of Wu Wei, or in English, effortless action. Like when things happen naturally and events just kind of fall into place. For example, it's masterful selling when a buyer gets so excited about your product that they talk themselves into it and all you can do is smile. Yeah, 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 that's the best. The blog was based on the writings of Lao Tse. He was a Chinese philosopher who authored the book called The Tao Te Ching 2,600 years ago, long, long time ago. His book is the second most translated book in the world, second only to the Bible, And to say that I've been highly influenced by this book is an understatement. Heck, the first time I was exposed to the idea of Taoism in business was when I was a new manager in the telecom industry. I was reading a business magazine that provided advice for managers. And being a new boss, I was hungry for managerial advice. I was so impressed by the article that I cut it out. It was on paper. Posted on the wall of my desk, and I'm looking at it right now. I've had it on many desks since that day. Here, let me read it to you. It it was titled, Lead from Behind. The philosopher Lao Tse suggested that to lead the people, walk behind them. And when the best leader's work is done, the people say, we did it ourselves. In creating this atmosphere, I convey the image of being a shadow figure in the background who really does not do very much. Nevertheless, I have found it to be the best way to manage. Management, like mass transit, is only noticed when it is bad. And that was written by Everett Sutters in the Wall Street Journal. I took the advice from that one little article to heart, and it was noticed by my team immediately. One day, one of my engineers asked me, why didn't I tell him in detail what to do and why I wanted him to kind of come up with the solutions? I showed him this article, and he smiled, nodded, and said, oh, I get it. Back in those days, empowering your employees was a new idea. I personally had no interest in being a micromanager. I hated working for people like that, nor was it my natural compulsion. A Taoist approach made a whole lot more sense to me. So when I moved from engineering into sales, I took the Tao with me and applied it in all I did. And I I was so successful taking this approach that I wanted to share what I had learned with the world. Blogging was very hot back in those days, so I started one called the Tao Te Ching of Sales. I wrote three times a week, religiously, right on the money, Each post took one of Lao Tse's chapters, and I framed it in a selling context. Let's take, for example, chapter 55. This comes directly from Stephen Mitchell's inspiring translation. I would like to read it to you. Chapter 55. 
The master's power is like this. He lets all things come and go. Effortlessly, without desire, he never expects results. Thus, he is never disappointed. He's never disappointed. Thus, his spirit never grows old. Yeah, I love this. Such wisdom can be applied in many ways in life. But for my blog, I made a decision to place it in the context of selling. So when I wrote my blog, it would go something like this. The master sellers let business come and go. They know they can't close all sales. Thus, they are never disappointed when deals are lost. Because they're never disappointed, they are forever excited to work on the next opportunity. (laughs) Isn't that great sales? That's a great example of looking at sales from a Taoist point of view. I wrote this blog for maybe, I don't know, maybe 18 months. And by then, I had said all there was to say. I ran out of things to write about. I, and I also thought that my chapters were too esoteric for the average seller. Nobody was really reading it. I didn't know enough about marketing and social media to get it into the world in those days. So instead, I made a decision and pivoted to starting a podcast on non-selling selling, and we called it Sales Babble, that whole data chain of sales stuff that was all set aside. And that's how Sales Babble got started. And it's been a great opportunity to grow my sales skills and to meet a bunch of great sales experts. But as I mentioned, it was last fall, I'd had enough. I'd done it for a lot of years. I was ready to pause the podcast to maybe even stop it forever and to move on to a bunch of other adventures that I work on separate from this. But, surprisingly, something happened that was very woo-way. Get this. A sponsor reached out to me and asked if they could return. They had already sponsored me before, and I didn't want to say no. It was a lot of money, and I hated to turn them down. I took it as a sign to continue the podcast. But to reinvent it by going back to my earlier blog. I was concerned that I would lose listeners. Sales babblers were used to hearing a 30-minute interview. Would they accept a six-minute episode? I wasn't so sure, but I took a chance and switched simply because I needed to grow. It was a bold step, and to my surprise, grow it did. Now, it took five months but I have been able to double my audience. (laughs) That wasn't my goal. My goal was to do something interesting, to do something fun. My goal was to use the podcast to help me write this book that I've always wanted to write. And by adding these vignettes with, with these characters, Pat and Chris and Lee, it's been just a ton of fun to bring a broader dimension to the podcast with practical examples that that listeners can identify with and apply in their own professional lives. And I'm not exactly certain why my listenership has doubled. People have reached out to me and said they enjoyed it, but not super duper clear. Maybe it's because they're shorter. I'm not really sure. But that's what's happened, and you can't argue the metrics. That's my story. That's why we're here. And I'm very excited to be working on this project. I hope you found this week's episode interesting and it provides some answers on what we're trying to do and what you can expect for the next year because we have many chapters to go. The Tao Te Ching's got, I don't think it's, I think it's got 81, 82, 83 chapters in it. So we've got, we've got some work ahead of us. To download a copy of this week's episode, you can find it in the show notes at www.salesbabble.com. And here's a cool thing. You can still find that blog that I wrote at the Tao Te Ching of Sales.com. I've got links in my blog. You don't need to memorize all these. You can go look it up later on. Did you find value in this episode? If so, please share it with a friend, just one person who's open to growing their selling skills. And if you have any thoughts on Taoism and sales, send me a message on LinkedIn. I would love to hear what you're thinking. That's it. That's all I've got for this week, folks. Until next Tuesday, take care and have a highly successful and a profitable selling day.
Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble Podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. This is a production of Abenero Media.